In this video, I am introducing the concept of the definite integral and the use of the fundamental theorem of calculus. So in previous videos, we have looked at the indefinite integral. The indefinite integral looks something like this. We would have the integral of f of x dx. And so what the indefinite integral basically tells us to do is to find the antiderivative. Okay? Remember that the integral symbol that looks like a big S and the dx are a matching set. They go together. And the function that we want to find the antiderivative of is in between the two. So it's the exact same thing with the definite integral, except we are adding to it a number up here and a number down here. And this number we usually refer to as A and this one as B. We call those the lower and the upper bounds of integration. Now, in a future video, I'll be explaining a little bit more about what this means. But right now, we just know, need to know how to use uh, the fundamental theorem of e calculus to evaluate a definite integral. So over here, we have the basic rule for evaluating a definite integral. So we see we have the integral from a to b of f of x dx. So when you see that you have the upper and lower bounds, that tells you that it's a definite integral. And we have a little bit more work to do than when we evaluate an indefinite integral. With an indefinite integral, we find the antiderivative and we're done. Now we have to do a little bit more. So what do we have to do? Well, the fundamental theorem of calculus tells us we take the antiderivative and we evaluate it at the upper bound B. We take the antiderivative, we evaluate it at the lower bound A, and then we subtract the two. So we have the lower bound A always goes in here, and the upper bound B will always go in there. If you evaluate it backwards, you'll get the wrong sign. So the easiest way to, to figure all this out, as usual, is to do some examples. So in this first example, um, the first thing that we want to do is find the antiderivative. So the antiderivative of x squared would be 1 third x cubed. Now, with an indefinite integral, we would put a plus c. We do not want to do a plus c now. What we're going to do is we're going to put a vertical line and we're going to put our lower and upper bounds of integration in here. Okay, so once again, the upper bound of integration goes here and the lower bound of integration goes down here. This tells me that I'm evaluating this antiderivative right here at five and at zero. So what that's going to look like is we want to evaluate f of 5, and then we want to subtract from that f of uh, 0. In other words, the antiderivative evaluated at 5 minus the antiderivative evaluated at 0. So the antiderivative is 1 third x cubed. So we have 1 third 5 cubed minus 1 third 0 cubed. And so... 5 cubed is 5 times 5 times 5, which is 125 divided by 3 minus 0, which would give us an answer of 125 over 3 in fractional form. And that is the answer to our definite integral. So the answer to a definite integral is not going to be an antiderivative like over here. It's going to be a number. Okay, that's the important difference. Uh, an indefinite integral gives us a, a function the, called the antiderivative. The definite integral gives us a number. All right, let's do another example. So in this example, we want to find the definite integral of 2x squared plus 3x uh, and evaluated from five to one. So let's start off by finding the antiderivative. The antiderivative 
is going to be x cubed over 3 or 2 thirds x cubed plus 3x squared over 2 or 3 halves x squared. Once again, we don't need to put a plus c now, but we're going to put a vertical line and put the upper and lower bounds of integration. That tells me that I want to evaluate. So we want to evaluate the antiderivative at 5, evaluate it at 1, and then subtract. So now this is going to get rather involved. f of 5 is going to be 2 thirds times 5 cubed plus 3 halves times 5 squared. f of 1 is going to be 2 thirds times 1 cubed plus 3 halves times 1 squared. And you can do all of that arithmetic by hand, but I'm going to use Desmos. I'm going to show you how to use Desmos to do this. So to use Desmos, let's start by simply putting in our antiderivative. And I'm going to use a capital F of X for the notation so we know what it is. And so my antiderivative was 2 thirds X cubed plus 3 halves x squared. So there's the antiderivative. And you could ignore the graph of the antiderivative. You don't really need the graph. We're simply looking at what we have here. Now, let's evaluate this. So I've written this as a function that we can evaluate for x. So I can simply go and find f of 5. That was my upper bound. And it gives me the answer over here. And then I could find f of 1. And it gives me the answer over on the right hand side. Now, there's an even easier way of doing this. I could simply put in f of 5 minus f of 1. There's the fundamental theorem of calculus right there. f of 5 minus f of 1. And it not only calculates f of 5 and f of 1, but it subtracts it for me as well. So the answer to this problem would be 118.6. 118.6. Once again, rounded to the tenths place. Our answer to a definite integral is a number. If we were looking for the indefinite integral, just to make a comparison here, if this number was not here and this number was not here, it would simply mean find the antiderivative of this. And my answer would be this plus c. Okay, so that's the difference between the indefinite integral and the definite integral. The definite integral, we use the fundamental theorem of calculus to get a number. Another example. So take a moment, stop the video if you need to. See if you can go through and do this on your own and then start the video. All right, the antiderivative here is going to be x to the fourth plus x squared. And we want to evaluate that from one to two. And so what we want to do now is find f of two minus f of one. And once again, to make this a little bit easier, Let's go to Desmos. So with Desmos, I can put in x to the fourth, oh, even before that, let's go to capital F, x equals x to the fourth plus x squared. And now I can do f of, oh, what was it? It was f of 2 minus f1. So f of 2 minus f of 1. And we get 18. So you still have to find the antiderivative, but other than that, Desmos is doing all the work for you. But you have to know how to set Desmos up to do it. 
Next example, again, take a moment, stop the video, go through and do that, and then compare it to what I do. All right, so the antiderivative here is going to be oh, 1 half x squared plus 1 third x cubed. And our bounds of integration are 0 and 2. So now we can just go straight to Desmos. And let's put in capital F of X is equal to 1 half X squared plus one third x cubed. There's my antiderivative. And again, we are evaluating that from two to zero. So capital F two minus capital F of zero. 4.66 or 4.7 rounded to one decimal spot. Around its two decimal places. So that's all there is to the um, fundamental theorem of calculus and finding definite integrals. So in the next video, I will do a little bit more complicated examples, but the idea uh, is basically the same.